um, TCHU2685. Um, each week, or sorry, not each week, each workshop, twice a week, um, you will have a short lecture to watch as part of your uh, weekly activities. And the reason I'm pre-recording the lectures is because there's a lot to cover in this um, particular course. Um, and I think it'll be really good to have that extra layer of um, information um, that over over arches all of the different um, workshops. And so no matter what um, mentor lecture you have, you can look at these lectures each week to get some um, additional information, but also get some kind of uh, link to some of the uh, ideas and concepts behind the course. Uh, and this is primarily because I have written the course and um, have designed it um, uh, in relation to the other courses that you're studying in this GD204 program. Um, and so you should certainly um, work closely with your mentor lectures in terms of the uh, workshop activities and the practical um, things that are in, uh, involved in your studies. But um, as we go through each week, it would be very useful for you to, to watch these um, and uh, to add them to your to weekly tasks. So what we'll look at today is... Um, you can see here I've got a split screen um, and I've got the course um, page, well the first uh, the first workshop page of the course um, on uh, Canvas um, and I'm just going to kind of use that as an example to show you what we'll be um, working with each, each workshop and your mentor lectures will um, extend on some of the points I'm going to cover today um, so that you can um, have a deeper discussion with them and they can explain a little bit further um, about what what some of the things mean and how they might take place for you as you go through the workshop um, days. So each workshop page in Canvas will look something like uh, what you see here and if I scroll through there's uh, usually an introductory section at the top here that you can see um, and then there's a section called course organization um, and that's um, will be pertaining to that particular workshop the kind of things that I would like you to do for each workshop and it will always start um, Oh, I'm sorry, it's not organisation. This is an overview. Ignore what I've just said. <laughs> so in this particular page, there's a course organisation. And this is about how TCHE2685 is actually organised, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and one of the things that it's organised around is the uh, dealing with wicked problems. Um, and so um, the kind of conceptual basis for the course is for you to think about uh, industry connected learning, learning that's connected to the real world, for example. Um, it's, it is linked to education and it's linked to early childhood, but it's not um, in the same way that the other courses are about the sector of early childhood education. Um, this is a flexi course and it's open to all people across the university so um, it has a kind of real world understanding of young children and a real world understanding of children in their kind of various education situations. So it does kind of tap into the early childhood sector but not just that. So there are other kind of concepts and contexts for education that um, we will refer to through this course. So one of the one of the kind of ways in which we focus um, the contents is through the addressing of these wicked problems and again I'll talk about those in just a moment. So the thing I was thought I was going to talk about before which I was mistaken is this section. So the title of the workshop is here. Um, and so for each of your workshops, there will be this, this uh, will be a title followed by activity. And underneath will be the um, dot points that you'll need to do. And it'll always start with um, watch the introduction lecture. And I've got a little spell 
check there I need to do, but uh, it will always be the first dot point. And so the activity for this particular workshop will include you watching that lecture. And in addition to that, you'll have a collaborate session. Um, and the collaborate session will have different requirements of you, um, depending on what uh, the focus of the workshop is. But they will always be listed here. So you can you know what to work through in terms of the expectations um, and what you will uh, what you'll need to kind of produce for each workshop. So the the expectations are around um, a few things. So even though these dot points here will change, um, the details of them will be slightly different for each workshop. What they um, what each workshop expects you to do is um, participate in the um, in the collaborate session, watch the lecture, which will be around 40 to 45 minutes long, um, access the resources, which are always listed here, embedded, either embedded under the headings, or at the end I've put in a little um, reminder of what the required texts are, but the actual access to these texts will be in the reading list area of the um, overall Canvas site, which is, if I scroll back up, um, here. So, But you guys will know this because um, this is not your first um, um, course within the program. So the reading list for the whole program is here. Um, and, and for you to actually do the practical work that is embedded in this, um, in this particular course. And the practical work is your assignment work. So um, it's, it will be very hard for you to successfully complete your assignments if you do not do the practical work, because this is a practical course. Okay, so how that will work for you in an online kind of... Um, context and I will talk about in just a moment. So um, those things together comprise your involvement in each of the workshops. So you can see how they actually start to add up to the um, five hours that you would have spent um, had this, you know, had we not been living through uh, COVID-19 um, and we would be attending classes at the university. So um, obviously it's not in one, uh, it's dependent on you when you do these works, but collectively it kind of works out at around the five hours. So it's an expectation that you will do these separate things as part of your, um, as part of your workshop um, through um, the course. So, being in the early years um, is a flexi course, so it takes place between semesters and it is an intensive. So as uh, I've mentioned before, it, it is open to anyone at RMIT. And so um, the tasks and the resources that I've chosen pertain to young children and they pertain to education but they're not you'll see that they are not specifically aimed solely at early childhood education sector okay so um, it's about children in the world and children being educated in the world so to help uh, organize this course I'm a fan of modular learning and so there are different modules of learning that we will cycle through for each of the workshops. So um, the eight workshops will we're, uh, are kind of termed as um, problem-based, research-based or industry-connected. And so the emphasis, depending on the workshop, will be on one of those three things. So what that means is problem-based learning is being faced with a wicked problem and exploring possible solutions. The research-based learning is about connecting to research and innovative thinking and how we understand education and care um, through these research-based initiatives and uh, progressions, if you like. So it's not just um, academic papers, um, but it can be kind of uh, digital innovations, uh, creative kind of insights, um, uh, you know, kind of cultural cultural awareness, 
cultural uh, knowledges and ideologies. And so um, research is not necessarily always tied to what happens in the academy, um, but it is certainly about um, pushing, pushing what we know at the moment and what's possible for the future. And then of course, the wicked problems are, as I'm going to explain when I work through them, they are very much um, identified as things that are going on in the world um, and how they impact on young children. And so these are kind of big problems. And so we want to think of them as these kind of really complex, um, kind of hard to, hard to kind of easily solve problems, uh, hence their term, wicked problems. Um, and so to help you understand about how they might be addressed is one of the modules is industry connected learning. And so this is about what's happening out there across different fields of endeavor, again, not just in early childhood education, but how industry connected learning, so what's actually already being done can help make you aware of, of things that are actually already taking place to inspire you on how you particularly might um, address your wicked problem. And so each time we start a new workshop, there will be an emphasis on one of those three types of learning. Um, and so um, they are complementary, as you can see. OK, so onto the wicked problems. These will be revisited um, every uh, workshop, um, but they also form the basis of your um, assignments. OK, so um, I'll get to the assignments in a moment, but uh, and they I won't explain them with great depth because this is what you will discuss in your collaborate session OK, with your mentor lecturer. This is just an overview of the organisation of the course um, and you will delve into this more with your mentor lecture in this first uh, collaborate session. So there are four wicked problems and in your group um, you'll have an assignment group um, and you collectively decide which one you are going to focus on for this whole course. So it's up to you which one um, but once you decide you stick with that and you focus on that for your for your all your work okay so as you can see they are tied to childhoods um, but the first one is the early childhood education in contemporary times so clearly what we are living through right now um, is a, a very big thing for us socially for us personally but also in terms of what what the impacts uh, this is having on children and their education. So the first wicked problem is how to provide education and care during the time of a global pandemic. So um, clearly there's lots and lots of information on that right now because it is absolutely at the forefront of what most of us are thinking about. And so, but it's a huge wicked problem. So in a way, if you choose this one, you're going to get lots of resources, but it's a very difficult one <laughs> to think about because it's an ever shifting situation. So there's pluses and minuses to choose this one in choosing this one. Wicked problem two is about arts connections. Um, and so arts connections is about how we connect young children to the kind of creative world um, and how how young children and educators might actually know what to do when they encounter this work. So how uh, how focused this is about the kind of perhaps the most conventional ways in which we would uh, encounter creative works. That's through an arts collection, not necessarily a physical one. It can be a digital one um, or exhibition. And again, that might be in a gallery or a museum but it might be somewhere else as well so it doesn't it's not necessarily a kind of conventional notion of those two things it, that can be very stretchy but how do we help young children and educators connect with and understand creative works um, and so that's about removing us from being passive viewers of works and just saying just stand back don't touch what do you think, to actually doing something a little bit more than that. So arts connections, incredibly important at this time. Uh, and, and there are many uh, reasons why the arts is a vital, a vital part of young children's lives. 
Wicked Problem 3 is about reconciliation. Um, it's um, really important that we develop much better ways of doing this in Australia. Um, sadly, particularly in early childhood, it can be very tokenistic or non-existent. And so we want to, how do we make sure that reconciliation and Indigenous perspectives particularly are done really well and meaningfully and um, properly um, in early childhood? And so if a, an Indigenous family uh, takes up a space in an early childhood centre, for example, if their child is one of the participants of the centre, um, how is in, how indigenous perspectives how are their lives and their culture reflected properly um, in that place um, but also if there are no indigenous families in a center how are indigenous lives properly in that place so it, it's irrelevant essentially is the point i'm making it doesn't matter whether a family is indigenous or not how do we actually make sure that Indigenous perspectives are done properly in young children's um, educative spaces? Um, and so it moves beyond a kind of um, misinformed or tokenistic um, kind of approach. Um, and certainly um, to, um, to challenge um, detrimental or racist views of uh, of indigenous communities or um, uh, many different um, communities. So we need to think about respect um, and um, being meaningful in terms of um, those perspectives. And then the final one is the digital interface. So we know that uh, digital technologies are um, every day, they are just ubiquitous, they are in our lives, they're in young children's lives. Um, the discussions in a way of whether young children should or shouldn't be on smart devices is kind of old now because we know um, that it's, it, it's just there for most of them. So we are, um, we are thinking about STEAM um, through the digital and how this is enacted in um, early childhood. So how do we innovate on that both um, beyond just handing out iPads to young children and letting them use an app? So what, what can we push in terms of this wicked problem? So again, these four, there's a very, they're a quick run through of the four and they will be dealt with in a lot more detail through the, through the course um, and uh, in more detail with your uh, mentor lecture as the, as the workshops go on. So have a think about those four problems um, and how you might um, select one in your uh, assignment group to tackle for your, for your tasks. Um, so yes, then as I've said, there's the activities listed and uh, there are some things in there that you'll need to, to um, complete. Uh, and again, if you have questions, the Collaborate session will actually um, cover those. Just a thing on these dot points, in your Collaborate session, the dot points are hollow. Um, and so that relates to your collaborate session, but everything else, like the solid dot points, that's something you yourself or you and your group need to um, have completed. Okay, so hollow dot points addressed in collaborate. The other ones are just general tasks that you need to um, that you need to complete. Now, some of this stuff about how to work together on your wicked problem, the types of ways you're going to manage that, that will be dealt with in your Collaborate session for this first workshop. So please hold off um, and uh, bring your questions to your Collaborate session. Um, lots and lots of hyperlinks. Um, these are, so these are my, f I've decided just to put some provocations for the, fir for the wicked problems for the first week. Um, and so something you might do is just read through those and decide what what piques your interest okay so um, how they are how they are perhaps um, connecting in with the, the things that you are aware of or that you have some prior knowledge of that you have some confidence in 
what you're curious about um, and um, and perhaps after that you can after watching these you can actually make your decision it is as you know an intensive delivery so this is not something you need to dwell on um, too long um, because obviously the um, workshops move quite quickly and there will be some expectations around you having done certain things um, at certain points and it is another reason why I also do dot point um, tasks because um, these will be um, these are based on what I think you can manage given the time frame okay so if you stick with the dot points and the tasks you'll you should be fine um, and uh, obviously I'm recording the lecture so at the moment it's just that but uh, you'll be watching this in this space <laughs> um, and so uh, this is where it will always be at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the um, course page on canvas so um, I will leave it there because um, there's plenty for you to be going on with um, there's also plenty for you to explore in this um, in this first course uh, workshop page the other thing to do as well is to look in assignments which you've probably also done already done I would imagine um, and um, so those of you who are um, you know kind of um, working through this program probably will have seen this assignment uh, the assignment details and again we will talk more about those in your collaborate session with your mentor lecture okay so um, hold your questions for for them so essentially this week um, we're going to look at these um, things in collaborate how to participate how to work together in a group um, how to use discussion boards or other platforms so it'll all, it'll be a lot of practical assistance on how to how to help you actually do the tasks. Um, research the wicked problems to understand them thoroughly, okay, as I've said. So these are starting points, but you might have some other resources you can go and find or you already know of. Um, you also need to have a bit of a timetable in your group um, and about how and when you'll work together. So maybe there's a common time that you always make in your assignment group. Um, and on what digital platform. Um, so you are going to need to video connect because the work is practical, okay? So discussion boards alone are not going to be enough. You actually need to have a session where you connect through one of the many video platforms. Some of you uh, might want to use, um, you're all universe, you know, RMIT students, so you can make a team site which is free and you can video chat for as long as you need and you record it. Um, you can also use any of the publicly available platforms um, like WhatsApp or um, Messenger or Zoom or Skype, whatever, whatever you want to, to use. Um, and then also you think about your um, extra research once you've selected your wicked problem do some extra a little bit of extra thinking around that and perhaps brainstorm some initial ideas and that might be the first thing you do together is your in your group okay so um, have a think about what I've talked about here um, and bring some questions to your collaborate session um, and I look forward to working with you over the you know, over the coming workshops, um, some of you will have me as your mentor lecture, lecturer, um, and so um, some of you I will talk to again, um, and I look forward to, to seeing the progress of your working through these wicked problems.